Hey, my name is April and I'm the Peaceful Wife. Today I'm going to talk about respecting our husbands as fathers. And I just want to mention that in all my videos and blog posts, I am not really talking about extreme situations where there's abuse, real abuse, drug addictions, alcohol addictions, uncontrolled mental illness problems, um, things like that, because I just can't begin to address all those issues. So if you have problems that are severe like that, please seek some godly one-on-one -on -one counseling with someone who can get to know your situation and give you proper guidance individually. All right, so Father's Day is coming up here in America in another week and a half or so. And I thought it would be a great time for us to talk about how we can respect our husbands as fathers because that is not what normally happens in our culture. I mean, you can watch almost any TV show now or movie and the mom usually criticizes the dad in front of the kids or acts like the dad is an idiot in front of the kids or undermines the dad's authority in front of the kids and everybody laughs and it's so funny, right? Well, that is not God's design. God calls a husband and a wife to be a team together. And the husband is given the role of leader by God in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, and also in Ephesians 5, 22 through 33, where wives are commanded to, by God, to respect our husbands and to honor their leadership. So what does that look like when we're talking about parenting? This is a tricky area for a lot of women. I mean, if we were not controlling before we had kids, and if we were not disrespectful before we had kids, there are so many more opportunities to be controlling and disrespectful once we have children that it can get really sticky. And, and as moms, we are looking from our female perspective at things, and it can be difficult for us to appreciate that our husbands have a masculine perspective that we don't have. And sometimes we think they are wrong, and we are always right, but sometimes it's that they are different, and sometimes it's a good thing they're different, and God gives them a different perspective than we have for important reasons. So what I did when I began to, when I saw my sin, God showed me my disrespect, my control, the way I had just taken over the whole family, and um, I, I repented, of course, to God for my disrespect and my control, and I repented to my husband, but I also had to repent to my children because I had not set a godly example. I had taken over and was running the whole show by myself without any input from my husband. He had backed off and become very unplugged and passive, and so I felt like an only parent a lot of times, and I didn't realize that if I supported my husband and honored his parenting and his authority, he was very glad to step up and lead and be an involved dad. Um, so I apologized to my children. My daughter was only two at the time, and my son was about seven. And I told them, I mean, moms and dads both have authority over children. That's, God's word says that, Ephesians chapter 6, where where. Children are to obey their father and mother um, in the Lord, for this is right, and it is the first commandment with a promise. Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, also honor your father and mother. But ultimately, the dad has authority over the marriage and family in God's sight. And so, if I undermine my husband, if I go around his authority, if I tell the kids, you don't have to do what he just asked you to do, that's ridiculous. Um, if I don't uphold the, ru the rules he makes when he's not there, um, I can create a lot of chaos in the family. I can cause my children not to respect my husband's authority. And this is not just about them respecting me and my husband. We are training them to respect God, to submit to God ultimately. That's the goal as Christian parents. We're also training them to submit to other God-given earthly authorities. So they are watching my biblical submission to my husband, and that is how they will model themselves 
how they treat those in authority over them, their teacher at school, their boss at work, the police officer who pulls them over one day, um, their commanding officer if they're in the military, their pastor, government officials, there are going to be authorities in their life and they are going to need to know how to honor and respect them. And I know that respect is a pretty lost art in our society today, but we need it. We need to respect others. This honors God, and this is his structure of authority for us to honor those that are above us in authority. Now, that does not mean that somebody in authority is worth more to God or more valuable as a person than somebody that's not in authority. Having authority does not give value. It is about God desiring to protect, provide for, lead, and care for his people, and the one in authority has much greater accountability and responsibility to God for the decisions that they make that impact those that they are taking care of. So what I began to do was um, I apologized to my kids for taking over and not considering their dad's feelings and not listening to their dad the way I should. And I began to talk about we are going to respect your dad now. We are going to speak respectfully. We are going to use a respectful tone of voice. We are going to um, not be disrespectful to our parents, either parent. And um, when I began to speak respectfully to Greg, watch my tone of voice, um, stop all the disrespect, I was shocked because my children immediately began to imitate me, tone of voice, words, everything. So, I, I mean, it was humbling to realize how much they learned from me, and it was a little bit terrifying to realize that they were going to act the way I do. So I need to be very careful that I'm giving a godly example for them to follow. Then um, I would also begin, if, if Greg had told them something like, don't jump on the couch, then when he was gone and they got on the couch, I used to just let them get on the couch. But now that he had said this rule, you may not get on the couch, I began to uphold his decisions even when he wasn't home. Remember what dad said? He said, no jumping on the couch. Let's not get on the couch, please. Um, and then I was also really surprised because my husband began to plug back in as a dad so much more. He, he, be, he began to become the man I knew that he could be. The man I had been trying to force him to be, but he wasn't responding to me all those years. Now that I was obeying God, funny how that happens, um, he began to plug back in. Once he knew he was respected and honored and I had his back, he began to be a much more involved dad and husband, and he began to lead, and I would support him. And then when I would tell the kids to do something, and if they didn't obey me, then he had my back and he would say, you heard your mother, you need to do what she said. And our kids' behavior improved so dramatically when they saw us come together, united as a team, instead of this, this parent says this and this parent says that, and so we can get away with stuff. The kids know that if they, if they have parents that don't agree, they can divide and conquer. And they will support the parent that they agree with and they will disrespect the parent that they don't agree with. That is not what we want to teach our children to disrespect authority. So even when we don't agree with our husbands, we can support their decisions um, in front of the kids. Now, if we have a concern, we don't agree with a decision, or we have information that we feel like our husbands need to know, we can say, could I speak with you in private for just a minute, please? And we can go talk to our husband and say, um, I have a concern about this, or here's some information that you maybe weren't aware of, and we can approach our husbands respectfully in private, and then our husbands can decide what they want to do after that. Now, if a husband is, is sinning against a child or being extremely harsh, we can approach our husband first, ideally in private, and let them decide what they're going to do, if they're going to repent. If our children are seriously in actual danger or are being abused or something, then 
we may need to get help, get them to somewhere safe. So I, I'm not really talking about situations like that here. Um, now, wives tend to be more protective of the moms tend to be more protective of children and dads tend to let them have a little bit more rope, a little more leash and let them experiment and, and do more adventurous things. Sometimes dads are more harsh than moms, but we need that. We need a feminine influence and a masculine influence in our kids' lives. And if we try to make our husbands be like us and be moms, we are actually going to damage our kids. Um, our kids need their dad's influence. So ideally we will let our husbands be the dads that they believe they need to be and we will be the moms that we believe God wants us to be and we can support our husband's decisions unless there is seriously something awful going on with sin or something is very, very harsh or abusive. Um, I would love to see us as wives supporting our husbands, even in front of extended family. So if dad asks the kids to do something, a grandparent or an aunt or uncle says to do something else, we can be that voice that says, no, remember your dad said this, or your dad asked you to do that, that's what we need to do. Um, you will find that as you support your husband, he will be so much more interested in being a father and in being involved with the kids. This past year, my husband spent, I don't know how many hours almost every night with our son, working with him with his homework in sixth grade. That would not have happened a couple, five years ago. That would not have happened because I was so critical. I undermined my husband. I thought I was such a better parent and I thought I knew best about everything. Now, I let my husband do what he thinks he needs to do, and he uh, he cares about my feelings now that I'm honoring him, and all I have to do is just mention something if I'm concerned, and he will seriously consider it, where before, what I was concerned about didn't matter much to him because he felt so disrespected. So I think the best Father's Day gift we could possibly give would be that every day we seek to affirm our husband's Praise them for what they're doing right as dads. Thank them for their involvement. Thank them for their leadership when they take ownership and they take and they try to make decisions for the family. We can also be supportive even when they make mistakes. Um, we are going to need to be able to give grace. And I mean, men are not born knowing how to lead families. They will make mistakes and that's where they learn. So as they learn, if we can continue to support and show faith in them, I think we'll see that they will blossom into the men that God desires them to be. You are welcome to check out my blog. I have a couple of posts about respecting our husbands as fathers. Um, you may want to check that out. My blog is www.peacefulwife.com. Thanks.